David here with Fig Boon on Pens, uh, back again with another Q&A. Uh, you guys had submitted some great questions that I'll get to, and I have a few other topics that I wanted to cover as well. Uh, you know, I have a feeling this might be a rather long video, so uh, let's get right into it. Uh, to begin with, a while back I had let you know that uh, I now have a P.O. box and encouraged you to send some magnets for my wall or anything else you wanted to send along, and I received some things. Um, I received uh, a number of cool postcards, like this one here is from uh, Audrey uh, in Quebec, Canada, a picture of a ferry on the water. I've never been to Quebec. I've been to Ontario and British Columbia, but not Quebec. Uh, then we have a nice postcard of a, a Japanese painting from Ryan who uh, said that he wouldn't watch my uh, my recent Game of Thrones Monte Grappa Game of Thrones limited edition review because he hasn't caught up with the most recent season of uh, Game of Thrones yet. So uh, it's a pretty good season, Ryan, so I hope you catch up soon and uh, don't get spoiled. Um, along with the postcard, he sent a couple of uh, ink samples, some Ackerman inks, and then uh, a couple of nice stickers, uh, a Rubik's Cube, and then a, uh, a picture of uh, Totoro from uh, the Miyazaki film My Neighbor Totoro, which is a, a film that I care for a great deal. So thanks for that, Ryan. Um, and then, let's see, next there was a, uh, a postcard from Christina, who lives in Buffalo, and this is a painting of a shark uh, girl sitting on top of a buffalo. Uh, I have some family in Buffalo and uh, we visited there on a number of occasions and they have these buffalo statues all over the city and uh, this is a painting that inspired one of them which uh, sits by the waterfront. So um, then the last postcard is something I thought was pretty cool. Um, that this is from Michael in Point Cook, Australia, which is uh, close to Melbourne, I believe. And I, th I just thought that was pretty neat because uh, Michael grew up in a town in Tasmania, which is an island just off the south coast of Australia, and his grandfather was the town crier. And he is pictured right here on the postcard in his town crier gear and Bell crying away. Now, Unfortunately, Michael's grandfather is no longer with us, but um, I thought it was a very cool memory of him. You know, if you go into a gift store anywhere in town and places like that and see pictures of your grandfather uh, like this, I think that's a, a pretty nice memory of him. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. Um, okay, a couple of things, uh, more things. I received a very nice letter from Stefan in Salzburg. Um, Austria, and he included a, uh, a magnet from uh, Salzburg. So thank you, Stefan. That will go up on the wall. Um, and then I received this very cool envelope. I mean, you know something is good in an envelope like this. I mean, on the back, it even has a little drawing of the solar system and a wax seal. But inside is uh, something from uh, Carissa in Ontario, Canada. Um, she, first of all, she included a very nice letter, and she has uh, much nicer handwriting than I will ever have. So, well, you know what? I shouldn't say that. Um, I could probably improve my quick, my quirky handwriting if I applied myself. I just haven't made it a point to do so. But still, I like her handwriting very much. Um, but then she also included a little sketch. Uh, it was a, a sketch of her desk and things on her desk, her glasses and a couple of pens. But um, I really love this. So thanks for sending that along, Clarissa. So uh, if you would care to send me magnets or anything else, then uh, you can find my P.O. box in the uh, notes below. And if you uh, send something, I will make two commitments. One is that as long as it is uh, not offensive, I will show it on camera. And that if you include a return address, I will send you back a note. Um, you know, I, I've never been the greatest when it comes to written correspondence, so this is kind of forcing me to do so. Not forcing me against my will, more forcing me to do something that I know is good for me. Plus, I get to use pens, which is always a good thing. Uh, let's see. This past week was the annual Pelican Hub meetup. Uh, in the Raleigh-Durham area, we had one of the larger gatherings. We had around like 45, 50 folks in attendance. Uh, it was really nice to see some folks who came out for the hub that typically don't make it to the uh, monthly meetings for the Triangle Pen Club. Uh, here's a picture of Sandra, uh, otherwise known as uh, WF Cupcake Girl. Uh, she brought uh, a number of treats. She made some cookies, a rum cake, and then some delicious cupcakes, which had a chocolate stout cupcake, then a whiskey ganache filling, and it was topped with some Bailey's Irish cream topping. I had two. 
I probably should have had more. They were delicious. So uh, Pelican has really committed to promoting these annual worldwide gatherings. They send out bottles of ink for everyone in attendance, uh, typically the color of the year. Uh, this year it was uh, Smoky Quartz. Uh, you know, I picked one up, but I actually already had a couple of these. Uh, so I'll tell you what, um, if you send me a postcard or letter or something in snail mail to my P.O. box uh, over the next month or so, that I will randomly select a couple of you, and when I send you a reply back, I will include one of these bottles of ink. Um, I think I have a couple, so maybe I'll give a couple of away. Um, in regard to contests, uh, you know, I did have a question from a user named Joe Black who asked, how do you pick the giveaway winners? I never see any videos uh, that name the winner. Well, Jack, that what, or uh, Joe, that what I do is um, I paste the names of everyone who left a comment on the video into Excel. Then I eliminate any duplicates in case someone left multiple comments and so they won't get multiple entries. Then I use some formulas to generate random numbers next to each person's name. And then I rank those numbers and whoever ends up ranked number 11th, because that's my favorite number, is the winner. Okay, so then I reply to their comment, let them know what they've won, and uh, give them a deadline to uh, email me their contact info. Uh, I used to not give a deadline, but one winner never contacted me, which was a little strange because I noticed them making comments on some of my other videos even after I reached out to them. So yeah, um, in, uh, in one case I had to pick a replacement winner. But uh, once I've made contact with the winner, I will put the name or the username of the winner uh, in the comments of the video containing the giveaway. So. That's how that's done. Uh, the next question was from, uh, let's see, from Bakir Yenilemez. I'm not, you know what, I am probably butchering that. Y-E-N-I-L-M-E-Z. And uh, they asked, what is your favorite ink dropper pen? You know what, for me, that would be the Franklin Christoph Model 66. Now, I have two of them. Uh, this one is in what they call the ice finish, and this one is a color prototype I picked up at a show this year. It was either the Triangle Show or Atlanta, I can't recall. It might have been the Triangle Show. But um, especially in this ice model, seeing the ink slosh around here is just very cool. Plus, you don't see it quite as much in the blue one here, but um, what is very cool is that with this ice finish, the ink kind of sticks in the nooks and crannies of the interior finish, giving it a, a rather unique look. Um, but uh, both of these pens, both the, uh, the color prototype and the ice, are very good pens, and I highly recommend them. Uh, and then plus, they just look cool as, uh, uh, as eyedroppers. Uh, and the ink capacity of these pens is huge. Uh, and then also, you know what, they do a very good job of not drying out either. Uh, so you can keep ink in here a long time and it's just not going to then go away. Okay, uh, user by the name of Cashboxer asked, if you could only have one pen to use for a year, what would it be? Now, I thought this was an interesting question. You know, my knee-jerk reaction would be to pick one of my favorite pens, which happened to be some of my more expensive pens. But then I got to thinking, you know, if this was the only pen I could use for an entire year, then it would need to be used in all sorts of situations. You know, for example, uh, this uh, ASC uh, Bologna uh, is a, a spectacular pen. Uh, which is quickly becoming one of my favorites. And, and I could use this pen every day for a year, but this is a very large pen and it is a very heavy pen. Uh, and this thing would be rather large and cumbersome to carry around in your shirt pocket or your pants every single day. You know, plus if you're using a pen every day for a year, that pen is gonna get some wear and tear. And I wouldn't want it to be something that I would really be worried about damaging like this pen. <laughs> Not that I'm hard on my pens at all, uh, but it would also need to be a pen with a high cool factor as well. You know, I wouldn't want to get sick or bored of using it. So I ended up choosing this, which actually does happen to be a rather expensive pen. It is a Sailor King of Pen Pro Gear Sky. I just really love this color. Um, it's a large pen, uh, more of a girthier pen, uh, that really doesn't carry an inordinate amount of weight. 
Uh, and the Sailor King of Pen Nib is one of my favorites. Uh, the only downside is that the ink capacity is not that large on here, but if I was using this pen every day for the year, then I would probably want to change out inks on a regular basis as opposed, since I couldn't trade out pens. Uh, so yeah, I could use this pen uh, every day for a year and not be too upset. Uh, and uh, like I said, it does happen to be one of the more expensive ones as well. Um, I have another King of Pen Pro Gear, a more traditional black with gold trim that I've previously reviewed. And, uh, and this one will get a review of its own somewhere down the line as well. Okay, next question is from Jose Marta. Uh, and he asks, is there a fountain pen equivalent for a Sharpie? Um, Jose says that he works in a lab and has to label things all the time and wants to know if he could use something a little more exciting than a Sharpie when labeling things. Uh, yes, there is. Uh, there are these markers that are made by Platinum. Uh, they're basically uh, found at any large online retailer, but what is cool about these is that you can eyedropper them. Let me see, maybe you could see it here in the blue a little bit more. Well, each of these, this is a clear barrel and it looks blue just because there's blue ink in here. Uh, but what it is, is it is a marker that you can use, you can see it's the marker there, with your choice of fountain pen ink. I probably wouldn't use a shimmering ink, that probably wouldn't work too well in here, but I have these three that I use at work all the time. Uh, in this one, I have Newler's uh, Black, or, uh, this one is the Noodler's Black Erase in this one, and uh, Noodler's Polar Blue in this one, and this is Diamine Red Dragon. Basically, it's because I've had these pens for so long, and those were three of my first bottles of ink that I ever had, and so there was, you know, it was a decent blue, and so that's what this one has always been filled with. And then you just eyedropper them whenever they're empty. Um, but one thing I really like about these is if you use Sharpies, you know that over time they kind of become less sharp. The nib wears down a bit and gets more stubbish. The cool things about these is that I have had them for several years and the marker tip really hasn't worn down that much at all and I use them all the time. You know, they might be a little more flexible when, then they, when they first started using them, but they're really not wearing down that much. Uh, and I, like I said, I use them every day. So I would recommend them as an alternative to a Sharpie. Okay, first of all, Sharpies are fantastic. They do the job very well. But if you're looking to, uh, to use fountain pen ink with something like a Sharpie, uh, then for under $3, this is a pretty cheap alternative. Okay, the next question is from Snoozle Bob. That's quite the name. Uh, and that person asks, or excuse me, Snoozle Blob, not Bob. Uh, and asks, what is a place you recommend people visit? Either a local, everyday type place or as a special place to check out when traveling. Uh, you know what? I recommend folks to visit a place that takes you out of your comfort zone wherever that may be. One where you can experience the local culture rather than simply bringing your own culture on vacation with you. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to be on a couple of trips to China and uh, we actually happen to be planning another trip to China next year. More specifically, we're heading to uh, Wuhan and Beijing and Guangzhou. Uh, but during our previous trips to the country, some of my favorite things we did revolved around venturing out on our own and interacting with the locals. Um, one of our hotels was near an elementary school and we would head out in the courtyard outside the school each morning and all these kids would be arriving and hanging out. Um, and I brought a uh, badminton set and we would play badminton with the kids. Uh, and they were all learning English and they would like to practice their English on us and they would kick my butt at badminton. Uh, but, you know, I can remember someone in our travel group, uh, we were out on a road trip one day and they were really upset because we were out in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the country and we couldn't find a Western toilet for them to use. You know, they, they just refused to use a squat toilet. Well, you know what? Guess what, dude? You're in the middle of nowhere, China. You have to adapt. You know, you might learn something by experiencing another culture, like how to use a squat toilet. But uh, yeah, Go someplace that gets you out of your comfort zone. I think that you'll, you'll learn and experience more than you would otherwise. So that would be my recommendation as far as a place to visit. Okay, next question is from uh, Crash Mania. And uh, they asked, as a Chargers fan that doesn't live in San Diego any longer, I grew up in San Diego, um, how do you feel about the new move? Has it affected your fandom at all? 
Okay, this is something I've been wanting to uh, discuss for a little while. And um, I wanted to talk about a custom pen that I had made by Sean Newton. Uh, but it wasn't something I was gonna do a full review on because it's a custom pen that Sean created for me that's rather unique. But I still wanted to share it because I think it's something special. And I have mixed feelings about the pen for reasons I'll go over in just a little bit. So, um, you know, I'm considering this to be a, a bit of a therapy session to get out uh, some repressed feelings that I haven't quite come to grip with. So I'm a big American football fan. I grew up in San Diego and for my entire life I had been a fan of the San Diego Chargers. Growing up, I can remember watching games with my dad and watching games with my friends and I can went to countless games on my own and just so many very good memories. I mean, I lived and died with my team. And I just thought it would be a cool thing to have Sean Newton make me a Chargers themed fountain pen based on the powder blue colors of their alternative jerseys or their alternate jerseys. Uh, the creative process of working with Sean was fantastic. Um, you know, I had some initial ideas and we went back and forth and discussed a number of possibilities and we finally agreed on a design and I ordered a pen back in June of last year. And it arrived on schedule nine months later. When you're dealing with custom uh, pen makers, especially more talented, popular ones, weight like, weights like that are very common. Um, but what happened from the time I ordered the pen until it arrived was that my beloved Chargers abandoned San Diego and moved 90 miles uh, up the road to Los Angeles. Well, you know, the players didn't abandon the team and the fans. It, uh, it was the owner that did. And while I understand from a business standpoint why the owner felt that he had to move the team, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it is his business so he can do with it what he pleases, but betraying the trust and loyalty of their fan base was crushing. And like I said, I would live and die with the team during the season. If they would win a game, then life was good for that week and every loss was heartbreaking. But I've documented it in another Q&A, but I don't. Since I've been living on the East Coast, I would make road trips to see the team play when they were somewhere near where I lived. I've taken trips to Washington, D.C. and Jacksonville and Baltimore and Charlotte and Atlanta and back to San Diego over the last few years. So them moving was devastating. Um, you know, I packed up all of my jerseys and hats and T-shirts and memorabilia and put them in a box in the attic. So what do I do now? Do I abandon my team that has been such a big part of my life? Well, I came to a decision. Uh, the decision is that I'm still watching the games, but I've kind of mentally disassociated myself with the team. And what I mean by that is that their performance no longer dictates my mood. You know, the box of stuff has remained in the attic and you know, I'm not sure if it will ever see the light of day, but for now I'm good. Still upset at ownership, but good. And hopefully in the future, San Diego will get another team and I can become a fan of that new team. But until then, I'm kind of half a fan, if you know what I mean. But what I ended up with here was a pretty remarkable pen. And this is what it looks like. Now, originally the cap was blue and the barrel was going to be white and then the trim gold. But uh, when Sean had the acrylic custom made, the guy that made the acrylic for him actually gave him another rod with the three colors combined. And we kind of agreed it looked better on the barrel than just the plain white. But the coolest thing in my mind about this pen is this clip. Look at this lightning bolt. Uh, Sean works with a gentleman who handcrafts unique clips like this out of sterling silver. So again, we agreed on a design, kind of what the lightning bolt was going to look like, uh, and uh, that they made this one of a kind clip. Um, something very cool that Sean does, let me get it out from over here, uh, is that for each of his custom pens, he sketches out the design. And I asked him to include the sketches with the pen. So he included some of the sketches here, but then he also had this sketch right here. You know, the idea was that I would kind of get this framed and it would be kind of a cool piece of fountain pen art. You know, the drawing behind my custom pen. So uh, one day when I'm on better terms with my team, I will frame this and get it on a wall. But in the meantime, uh, you know what? I have this pen and this pen is not for everyone. It is huge, it is loud, it is gaudy, but it is mine, and it is exactly what I wanted. 
Uh, you know, I really don't care that anyone else uh, may or may not like this pen because I like it. And in the end, that's what's important. But uh, if you go with a custom pen maker, you can get cool and unique things like this that no one else can have or no one else would have. So um, if you're considering having a custom pen made, there are a number of great folks out there that do outstanding work, but uh, Sean Newton was great to work with and I appreciate how willing he was to take on a bit of a challenge with that pen. It was a, a very fun process. Okay, so um, a number of rapid fire questions, kind of short questions with relatively short answers. Uh, the first question is, is that your signature you're writing when you're doing the fast writing sample? Uh, kind of. It's my initials, or at least my first two initials. It's a D for David, and then my middle initial, uh, my middle name starts with an A. So it's basically the at sign, which is actually called the commercial at. Uh, adding a P for Parker or just having DP didn't quite flow right. So uh, it's just been DA for quite some time. Uh, Another question was, what's your least expensive pen you use on a regular basis? You know what? I still get a lot of use out of my Twisby Diamond 580. Uh, this is a great pen and a great value for the $50 price tag. Uh, but I believe that that's the least expensive pen kind of in my regular rotation. You know what? I actually really thought a lot about this choosing this pen uh, when, uh, when going over that topic of which pen to use for an entire year. Um, it's that good. I could use this every day for a year and uh, I wouldn't mind it. Okay, next question is how many pens have you reviewed? Well, this is my 127th overall video and 28 of those have been something different than a pen review. So just looking strictly at pen reviews, I have done 99. So the next one will be review number 100. So we'll see, but I'm planning on it being a very special pen. You'll find out more next week. Uh, next question is, uh, how is Jenny setting in? Has she developed any cute quirks yet? Uh, yes, Jenny is getting huge. huge. Uh, here's a picture of her when we first brought her home, and he this is her now. Uh, in regard to cute quirks, uh, we have a hardwood floors downstairs, uh, and when she sits, most of the time her fluffy little behind can't get any traction, so it kind of slowly just slides backwards. So uh, I think once she gets a little bit larger, uh, that won't be an issue, but for now, it's pretty cute. Uh, next question is, how much... Uh, or how much can you use your pens at work? Um, I use them every day at work for notes and things like that. Um, I use my pens at work more than I do anywhere else. Um, if you follow me on Instagram at uh, figboot11, I typically post every day which pen I take to work with me. And I kind of try to rotate through my collection. But uh, yeah, I have a pen of the day that I post up there. The next question is, do you ever attempt to match ink color to a pen color? Absolutely, yes, all the time. Uh, the ink has to match the pen or be complementary to it. Uh, you know, for example, this uh, Canalea Nui Nalu um, has a bunch of awesome shades of blue. So I always have a vibrant blue in here, like a Roshizuku Konpeki, or I think I actually have this inked up right now with an Omas blue right now. But in my mind, it wouldn't be right to use a black or a red or a green ink with this pen. It's just screaming to be used with a nice blue ink. Uh, there's some other pens where colors don't matter as much. Um, you know, when you have something classic like this Mont Blanc 149, um, you could use a wider variety of colors, I think. Uh, you know, I typically use a darker blue or a blue-black with this pen. Uh, I have some Ackerman Shocking Blue in here right now. But yes, uh, there's just certain colors that feel right with certain pens. The next question was, um, if money didn't matter, which pen would you add to your collection? You know, right now, the only pens that are really on my high on my list uh, to eventually purchase are a Namiki Emperor and a Conid Book Filler. Uh, you know, I have a rather large birthday coming up, so I've been very tempted to place an order, but uh, I need to be a little bit more responsible. Uh, I do plan on selling off a bunch of pens I don't use that much, and when I do, my reward to myself might just be picking up one or, or both of those. Um, okay. One final question, and it is one from uh, Diana Casey who asks, what advice would you give to someone who is thinking of doing reviews? 
Now, you know, I debated how deep to get into this question. Um, so what I've decided to do is actually kind of give a, a little info here in this video and at a later time in the near future, I'm going to do an entire video just on this topic because I think there's a lot of info to share on this topic. Uh, Stephen Brown has a very excellent video entitled something like why aren't you doing reviews or something along those lines. Um, that video was very instrumental in my deciding to do reviews myself. So. Um, you know, I'll share more at a later point in time, but um, here's kind of an abbreviated version. Uh, the most important thing in my mind is to have fun. If you're going to commit the time necessary to create quality online content, whether it be a blog or a video review, um, you need to enjoy what you're doing. Uh, that it takes me between five and seven hours to create a review or a video like this. Um, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, you'll quickly give up on it. Uh, you know, to begin with, I would recommend initially not investing in any equipment. You know, work with what you have. The camera you have on your cell phone is probably going to be good enough to get you started. And you don't quite need to go out and get a mic yet. But, um, you know, you want to make sure that this is something you like. You don't want to invest thousands of dollars in equipment only to find out that you really don't enjoy doing this. But once you do decide you enjoy this and you decide to do it on a regular basis, then commit to it. I've seen plenty of channels that have like two or three videos or even one and then they quit. You know, maybe they get frustrated because no one's watching or they don't like what they produced. Just, you know, understand that what you produce at first will probably be terrible. Uh, you know, I'm speaking from personal experience as well. Maybe not terrible, but you know, you're learning. As with anything else, you'll get better the more you do it. I look back and cringe at some of my early reviews, but I think I've learned over time. And, Understand that when you start, no one will be watching or reading, but don't let you, that get you down. My first month, I posted four reviews and I had a total of 20 views and one lone subscriber. Uh, a user by the name of, uh, it's 19SONKYU, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but uh, man, that, that feeling was great when that lone person hit the subscribe button after a month. But, you know, don't focus on subscribers or view count. Focus on content and quality. My philosophy has always been that if you create quality and entertaining content and have fun, then the views and subscribers will come. People are always on the lookout for something new and something interesting. So if you're creating something good, people will find you, people will share it, people will talk about it. Uh, Commit to timetables. Uh, determine how often you will post and then stick to your timetable. You know, I committed to myself to post a video a week, typically on Saturday. And outside of a couple of rogue weekends or two over the last couple of years, I've kept to that schedule. I write during the work, uh, right during the week, and then I tape first thing on Saturday morning, and then I edit, and then I post. Uh, you know, I kind of need to get better about taping multiple reviews and having a bunch in the can, but for the most part, uh, you're seeing videos from me that are hot off the press, and I just recorded them a couple of hours previously. Uh, I would also say that when you do decide to invest a bit uh, into some equipment, you don't need to go crazy. You can get a decent quality lava mic for $25 uh, that will improve your audio greatly. And you can get a set of lights for under $50. Lighting is very important. You know, for example, here I am looking very sullen uh, with just some natural lighting. And then here I am with some natural light plus some room lights. Then here I am with some heavy drapes shut and just standard room lights. Uh, and then we have lights, uh, sta light stands plus the room lights. And you can see it kind of the, with the room lights, it has a, like an orangish glow to it. And then finally with the room lights off uh, and, and just the light stands. And so you can see how just a you know, less than $50 investment really makes quite the difference for just a, uh, a very small investment, uh, gives it a much more professional look and a nicer look to it. And then finally, be okay with putting yourself out there. Take risks, develop your own voice, try different things. I've tried some different things that really didn't work out that well. Uh, for example, I, I enjoy magic and performing magic tricks. You know, a while back, I thought it would be fun to do a trick at the beginning of a review. Uh, it was my review of the Delta Dolce Vita Stantufo Federico. Uh, 
And I practiced that trick over and over and over because I didn't want uh, folks to think it was a camera trick or anything like that. Uh, and that I was actually really pleased the way it turned out. And then it basically got no reaction whatsoever. Uh, you know, I think at the time only maybe one person commented on it. So I learned that folks don't necessarily want to see magic tricks on their fountain pen reviews. You learn. Uh, and then finally, don't let the internet get to you. Uh, what I mean by that is that inevitably you will receive negative feedback. You will get rude comments and you will have people point out the one thing that you are aware of and most self-conscious about. You know, be ready for it. Um, I have been very fortunate that I received very few downright negative and inappropriate comments. Typically folks aren't out there trolling fountain pens videos and are very supportive, but it happens. So be ready for it and don't let it get to you. It's part of the gig. Um, you will get down votes and thumbs downs on your video, you know. But personally, whenever I see that someone has given a thumbs down to one of my reviews, I choose to believe that that person meant to give me a thumbs up and accidentally just clicked the wrong button. So that's what I choose to believe. Uh, oh, one final thing together, or one final thing about this is that when I'm putting together a review, you know, I'm always looking to try something different. Uh, uh, whether it's a little bit different, uh, add some unique content, or things like that. Uh, in regard to my most recent uh, review of the Montegrappa Game of Thrones limited edition pen, I thought it would be fun to put a little something together where I would put my face in a scene from the show. Uh, it was a scene where Jacques and Hagar turns around and changes his face. And I was going to make it my face when he chain turned around. But, you know, even though I have the proper special effects editing software, it was something I hadn't done before and I just couldn't quite get it looking as good as I wanted to. So after a couple hours of playing around with it, I decided not to include it in the review. But what did turn out okay, uh, I thought, was the part right before the face swap. So I at least wanted to share that part with you. And keep in mind, this was going to be included like right at the beginning of my uh, Montegrappa Game of Thrones pen review. So here you go. Here. What is it? A coin of great value. Could it buy a horse? It is not meant for the buying of horses. Then what good is it? If the day comes when you must find me again, just give that coin to any man from Bravos and say these words to him. Monte Grappa. Monte Grappa. Okay. I think that was a mistake that I left that out. I, I should have found a way to work that in. So, oh, oh well. Okay, well, you know, I think that's good for now. Uh, I greatly appreciate all of your questions and comments. And as a reminder, if you send something to my P.O. Box in the next few weeks, uh, you will be entered into a drawing to win a, a bottle of Pelican Edelstein Smoky Quartz Ink. Until next week, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.